As software engineers and developers, we work in a landscape that is constantly evolving. With many features in our favorite development technologies moving from draft to stable recommendations over a period of time. In 2025, several previously experimental features in HTML and CSS have become widely supported and are now considered key parts of modern web development. As many new features standardize, the need for third-party frameworks to accomplish many programming tasks decreases, relieving us of bulky, load-intensive, application bloating dependencies. Over the year 2025, the main focus in HTML has been on creating native, accessible user interface components with less reliance on JavaScript. JavaScript is great and it has its place, but it's always nice when HTML or CSS relieve us of some of the duties that JavaScript has been known for, which could greatly slim your applications and make them speedier. So even though we love JavaScript, it's always nice when HTML and CSS come along and update themselves to take the need for JavaScript implementation in the front end out of the equation for certain tasks. So I put together an example web page that demonstrates these new features so that you can begin to get excited about learning how they work in upcoming new video tutorials on my channel. And if you happen to know other developers or programmers that might benefit from learning about these things in depth, or at least at a surface level, be sure to like, comment, and share this material so that it reaches more people. Some of these features that you're about to see, you may have already come across, or possibly even implemented already into some of your projects. But before 2025, they were just experimental features, and now they're becoming more standardized where they work in most environments, where before there were certain environments, important environments that they may not have worked in. The first one is the container query. And we resize the browser window to see how the card layout changes based on the size of its immediate parent container and not the entire viewport. And this feature has matured, allowing components to style themselves based on the size or style of their parent container rather than just a viewport. And this is important for truly reusable, modular user interface components. So let's watch as we resize the browser window. See how they resize and then restyle as the layout becomes different size or the parent container becomes a different size. And I'm going to be doing independent separate tutorials for each new feature that we'll be covering. And there's more than just the four shown on this page. There's so many new features that are now becoming standardized. The next one is the has selector, the parent selector. And this is a powerful addition that lets you select an element based on the content or descendants that it contains. For example, you can style a div differently only if it contains an image. So the first card in this example is styled with a green border and a shadow only because it contains the red discount badge. You see this 25% off discount badge. And that's all done thanks to the CSS has parent selector. Now the next one is the popover API. The popover API has become widely available allowing any HTML element to be designated as a temporary on top user interface element that can be easily shown and hidden. You can add popover auto or popover manual to any element to give it built in popover behavior. So if you're looking to make pop up interfaces or overlays, you can do that using the popover API. Let's click this. Now you can style this any way you want. And there's a whole lot of different features to it and I'll be showing a tutorial specific to this feature. And the last little demo on the page here is the new details accordions feature. So it used to be where you would have to have some JavaScript in place to see if any of these were opened or not before a new one would close the previous one. But now as you click the new the previous closes. So that way the user doesn't wind up with a whole bunch of opened 
details. They're all connected now in a native way. So this is all fully native without the need for JavaScript and they're mutually exclusive accordion systems where only one panel can be open at a time using the existing details element combined with the name attribute. And I'll be showing a tutorial for that as well. Now this next example is showcasing the View Transitions API. Now the View Transitions API is one of the most exciting advancements because it allows us to create native app-like experiences without massive JavaScript frameworks. So here you might have some product page that you're building. When you click on a product, it has a nice little animated transition to view the product in its full details for each product. And this is all done natively in JavaScript without the need for any third-party framework bloating your application or making things load slower. And that's honestly just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many new things to show and demonstrate and make tutorials about that I'm going to have a blast for the rest of 2025 showing you guys all kind of really cool stuff and giving you great real world examples of how to implement them. So another cool thing that we'll demonstrate is the at scope CSS scoping. Now this feature is advancing to make component level styling easier by allowing you to define a scope for your selectors, preventing styles from leaking out or affecting unwanted elements on a page. Then there's dynamic styling and color. We have a relative color syntax, a light dark function. Now the light dark function simplifies creating dark mode support by allowing you to define two values for a single property one for the light mode and then one value for the dark mode that the browser switches between based on the user's system preferences. So if they have on their system dark mode selected then they'll get the dark value and if they have light mode selected in their system they'll get the light value. It's a really cool feature. I'm really excited about that one. We also have anchor positioning, a new capability that allows you to declaratively position one element relative to another. And it's perfect for tool tips and little popovers that need to stay attached to a specific target on the page, even when the viewport is being scrolled or moved around. Then there's content visibility, a performance boosting property that tells the browser to skip rendering elements that are off screen until they're about to come into view, drastically improving the initial load time of long pages. Then we also have text wrap balance, a property that helps prevent typography widows or orphans, single words that are left alone on a line by asking the browser to intelligently balance the text across the available lines and it's ideal for short headings and titles. And then we have the scroll bar gutter, a property to prevent frustrating layout shifts by reserving space for a scroll bar, even when the content isn't long enough to trigger one. Well, I don't want to make this video too long by sitting here and listing all of the new features. I'm just going to go ahead and call this video quits. And then in the upcoming days, I'm going to start creating video tutorials for each one of the little items and properties and new features that I've been discussing here today. And I'll make sure with my code examples that we make them easy to understand for even a beginner or an advanced developer. And I'll be providing code examples all throughout these tutorials. And I'll probably have them available at my website. I can't say if they'll be available long term. But definitely as I'm creating the tutorial series, I'll have the code available for copy paste at my website for all of these examples. That way you can get the insight and the, the programming theory in the video and you'll get a lot more details and discussion about it. But then you won't have to copy the code from the screen. You can just go grab the code from a web page, copy and paste it. So I hope this gets some of you guys excited. And I'm surely excited 
to implement these into my own projects and my client projects. And I think 2026 is going to be a huge leap forward in advancements in CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. All three of those technologies getting new features that make them so much more powerful and so much more useful to us. And like I said, every time that one of these technologies adds a new feature, it helps decrease dependency on third-party frameworks and third-party systems that might be slowing down your applications, slow down the loading time, slows down the operational time, and it'll also help where things get sometimes one thing will block another thing so so one framework that you have might be a conflict or hurting the applications functionality by having a conflict with another framework that you might have in place so you might be using multiple frameworks because one or several frameworks might not offer the functionality you need in a specific one because all of them don't do everything so what happens is a lot of times we'll be making Frankenstein projects where we're just throwing every framework into the system and there'll be sometimes compatibility issues and conflicts that arrive because of that so you'll have faster loading no conflicts everything will run smooth seamless and super fast alright so if you made it to the end thanks for watching and I'll talk to you very soon bye bye